David Marquet talks about um, potentially a challenge yes. when you have leaders and followers yes. in terms of creating a tiered system. And should we be too surprised if we treat people as leaders and treat people as followers if you have different levels of engagement? Right. What he's talking about with David Marquet, for those of you who don't know David Marquet, Marquet is a remarkable, remarkable theorist on leadership. He was a former uh, naval submarine captain. And uh, he was a career uh, officer, career naval officer. He went to Annapolis, um, where he graduated ooh, top five, I think, of his class. And um, uh, went through his career as a submariner and then was given the greatest honor any sort of naval officer could be given command of his own ship. And uh, they gave him the command of the USS Olympia. It was one of the best submarines in the fleet. He studied the ship for a year um, because he believed his credibility as a leader was closely tied to his intelligence and his knowledge of, of all the systems. The, more, the smarter he was, the more aware he was, the more he knew, the more credible he was as a leader. That was his belief. That's what a lot of us believe. You know? And so he never ever wanted to know less than anybody else. So for one year, he studied every pipe, every switch, every function of the submarine. He knew it inside and out, studied the dossiers of his crew, knew everything about them, knew their strengths, their weaknesses, all their commendations and everything. Two weeks before he took command of the Olympia, he got a phone call that says, yeah, you're not going to be on the Olympia. We're putting you on the Santa Fe. Oh, and by the way, the Santa Fe was the lowest rated crew in the entire United States submarine fleet. They ranked last, or close to last, in nearly every readiness measurement that the Navy had. But Marquet's a smart guy, and he likes a challenge. He's got a big ego. The, the Santa Fe was a slightly newer Los Angeles-class submarine, but he figured, I can do it, right? And he figured, it's a bad crew. It's OK. I'm a good leader. If I give good orders, I will have a good ship. If I give, bad, if I give great orders, I will have a great ship. That was the belief, right? So he shows up, and on the first day, starts barking orders. Everything goes fine. Second day starts barking orders, they're following his orders, yes sir, aye aye sir, everything's going fine. And about the third day, he decides to run a drill. They turn off the nuclear reactor and pretend there's been a meltdown, and he runs the, the, the submarine on batteries, EPM it's called. And he decides that he wants to make the, the situation a little tenser for his crew and see how they react when it gets a little harder. And so he gives a very simple order, ahead two thirds. And his his second in command, who's standing right next to him, who incidentally has more experience on this submarine than anybody else, he's been on, on board for two and a half years, repeats the order, ahead two thirds, and nothing happens. Marquet peers out from the side of his periscope and he sees Seaman Jones, junior enlisted guy driving the boat, you know, s literally squirming in his seat. And Marquet says, Seaman Jones, what's the problem? And Seaman Jones says, sir, there is no two-thirds setting. Apparently, on the slightly newer Los Angeles class, they just didn't put a two-thirds setting on the EPM. He turns to his number two, and he says, did you know this? And the guy goes, mm-hmm. <laughs> he says, then why did you give the order? He says, because you told me to. And it was at that point that Mark Hay realizes that he's in command of a ship he doesn't understand, and he has a crew that's trained for compliance. Something bad was going to happen. It's not like he can just turn around and come back to shore and say, I need a different boat, and I need a different crew. He had no choice. He's, this is his crew. He's out. We think we have an advantage in private sector because we can hire and fire. You're assuming you're hiring and firing the right people, right? So Marquet is forced to literally re-understand everything he's been taught about leadership and realizes he has no option but to completely empower his crew. And he comes to the realization that the people at the top of an organization have all the authority but the people at the bottom have all the information. And our usual reaction is to push all the information up but the reality is you have to push all the authority down. And he did a few things that completely changed how the submarine operated. They became, you ready for this? The best rated submarine crew in naval history. Not just that year, not just amongst submarines, in naval history. The average reenlistment rate in the Navy is about 20. It used to be three on board the Santa Fe. After Marquet, it went up to 33. The average number of officers who went on to their own commands in the Navy is about two per boat. In Marquet's boat, nine out of the 14 went on to their own commands. It wasn't just a great turnaround story. He had built a leadership factory. Read his book. 
It's called Turn the Ship Around. His name is Marquet, M-A-R-Q-U-E-T. His work is quite remarkable, and it's a step-by-step. -step. He tells you step-by-step -step what he did on how to transform uh, command and control structures into what he calls leader-leader structures, which is what you're referring to.